Some people think Bitcoin is crazy, right? Or cryptocurrencies are crazy. I would argue that the world we live in today is crazy, right? And I'll just give you an example, right? So, Jose, right? So, with Jose, if, if I say, Jose, I want to send you an email, right? So, I would say, great, Brian, this is my email address, and just send me whatever you need to send me. Great, done, right? I don't ask him anything else. I don't ask him, hey, Jose, are you going to check that on your iPhone? Are you going to check that on Outlook? Are you going to check that on Hotmail, Gmail? I don't ask him any of these questions. I don't have to. Right? Now, if I say, Jose, you know, uh, yeah, uh, thanks for that concert ticket. Let me, let me send you uh, 20 bucks for it. Right? We would play a game. We play a game of 20 questions. Right? We say, hey, are you on PayPal? He's like, I don't know. I forgot my password. And he'd be like, hey, Brian, are you on Venmo? I'm like, no, I'm over the age of 30. Right? And, and you know, they'd be like, hey, do you use Square Cash? Like, come on, man. No one uses Square Cash. Right? And we'll just kind of like hope Square's not here. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, we'll just kind of play this game back and forth. Right? And then we'll finally get to a point where it's like, all right, you know, uh, what's your bank account number, your ride number, et cetera, et cetera. Well, you know, I'll, you, know you get it in three days. You know, instead of that 20 bucks, you'll get 1750 whatever it is. Right? But we'll have to play this game if we want to transfer money. Right? Now, with, with cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, all I ask them for is like something similar to an email address. Right? Your QR code, right? Or your wallet address. And we just transfer it. It doesn't matter if he uses Zappo and I use Circle or et cetera. It doesn't matter the application you use. You can just transfer it from one person to another seamlessly. And that starts to create this thing called decentralized trust, right? Decentralized trust becomes important because when you have decentralized trust, uh, everything moves to the protocol, and then the applications are where the innovation happens, and people trust the protocol. And so similarly, when we had this, we were talking about email, we basically are just using SMTP as this open and interoperable protocol. It doesn't matter what browser he uses, right? And you basically compete on features for your email client or features on your web browser, for example. And similarly, what will start to happen is the intermediaries start to lose power. Because the intermediary basically is the protocol, the free and open one that you can use. And then companies don't compete on the network effect they had within your PayPal network or with your Venmo network or your, um, or your, your Square Cash network. You start to uh, compete on all of the, the features that you have. And, and that becomes powerful. You start to uh, eliminate intermediaries. And then you start to get business decentralized. Some people don't say, they say, you know, uh, I don't really. Uh, you know, uh, really understand why we have to have these decentralized ledgers. So I want to kind of give you a couple of uh, examples. But what we start to do is start to lower friction in the transfer of our data, start to lower friction on choosing which network you choose to work on. Um, you start to lose the friction of distribution. I'll start to give you a few of those examples um, of how this starts to be impacted, um, not just in finance, but in other industries as well. And when that friction starts to get reduced, what I, what I, <laughs> this was kind of funny, so, uh, or sad, I don't know which one. Um, uh, as it turns out, in, in Europe, in the UK, uh, people were more loyal to their bank than their partner. I think the, the people uh, spent 17 years with their bank and about 11 years with their partner. Right? Because there's a lot of friction involved. You don't want to change your bank, right? It's tied to your direct deposit. You may have a loan with them, right? There's a lot of friction in switching. But the big question is do we trust these institutions, right? That's what everyone's asking. Are we trusting these institutions? And, and the question is. Very, this, this came from the Edelman Trust, uh, Trust Barometer. Very little has changed since 2008. And the only industry trusted less than the finance and banking uh, industry, and just by a hair's breadth, is the media. Right? So we're pretty loyal to these, not to, 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 to banks and to, to you know, the different finance apparatus that you're using, uh, not because you trust them, but because of all of this great friction. But what's happening with blockchain uh, technology is all of a sudden we're reducing the friction. Reducing the friction to change. When you start to reduce the friction to change, um, the friction is no longer your competitive advantage, and you start to need to move to trust. And so some people think that you know, blockchain is a competitive threat. I actually think it's an opportunity to reinstill the trust that's been lost. This is an opportunity. Mm -hmm.